Hey, Nick Fenton here, founder of TickerTank.com. We're moving forward with our Naked Put Entry Criteria video series. Today is part five of seven, and the topic of discussion is return on capital. What is return on capital? How can you make it, or where does it fit in the criteria, and how do you view it in the easiest manner? So I was shown this particular gym, if you will, um, and I do say gym not loosely. This is a very easy and effective tool when um, analyzing naked puts. So we want to look at return on capital. I was taught this about 2006 and it was a very eye-opening situation for me. Uh, just simplified the whole naked put analysis process and I've been using it ever since and it's been very very handy. So let's discuss it. First of all, return on cap. my particular return on capital criteria is a return on capital of 0.75% daily or better. So minimum acceptable daily return on capital of 0.75% or three quarters of 1%. When you come over here to the spy or to the trade tab in Thinkorswim, you can see we've got our we're just gonna stick with spy again just to kind of keep things simple. The other day when we were on part four when we were looking, SPY's volatility was 14%. Now it's decayed down to 12.7%. So we've got even less implied volatility. SPY is not a great candidate for selling naked puts because of this low implied volatility. But we're gonna start looking at SPY to show you a bad example of return on capital and then we'll move on to a good example. So how do you uh, look at return on capital really easy? You can drop down on your layout default layout is volume open interest hit customize scroll down here and choose return on capital right here hit add items once it's added over here I like to move it up and hit OK then you can just immediately go to save as and you can save this as your say naked put entry criteria or something like that Whatever you want to put. Save. So that's going to save that layout for you. So now when you drop down, you can see that layout right here. Make it put entry criteria. You don't have to go to customize every single time. So what we have now is let's expand this May 13 again. And you can see our columns bid, ask, ROC, which is return on capital, volume, and open interest. So we know SPY is a very liquid uh, candidate here. So we don't have to worry about looking at the bid, ask spread and the, and the volume and the open interest to make sure that they are uh, acceptable from a liquidity perspective but we do need to look at ROC to see if it's acceptable because of how low the implied volatility is I mentioned a minimum acceptable ROC of 0.75 daily so how do you determine what the minimum acceptable percentage is you simply look at this the amount of days left until expiration in this case 37 days left until May expiration and you multiply that by 0.75 so let's pull up the uh, calculator here. We've got 37 days times 0.75. 27.75 is our minimum acceptable percentage in the ROC column. And of course we want to be out of the money with our uh, strike. As you can see here, if we look at this ROC column, we're with, we're with 15 strikes here and we got to get well in the money, you know, eight points in the money in order to even be at excuse me we need to be eight points in the money in order to even be at near that 27.75 percent minimum acceptable credit or ROC rather so all in all this is not an attractive scenario let's take a look at one that is an attractive scenario FSLR had a huge move yesterday to the upside that upside pop really uh, pushed implied volatility up. Yesterday the implied volatility was up to 90%. Today it's faded 20%. So if you were an option premium seller yesterday, you could be covering today for a nice profit. But there's still some good opportunities here to sell premium. And what you can see pretty quickly is it's a very different landscape in this ROC column. We can get six points out of the money here and be at 30.65, which is very close to our minimum acceptable 27.75 so you're rarely gonna meet exactly that 
0.75% minimum acceptable credit, but that's a good benchmark to go off. You don't want to err on the lower side, you want to err on the higher side of 27.75 in this example. So we wouldn't want to go to 30 because it's 25.5, that's below 27.75. We want to be at 27.75 or higher, so err on the higher side. In this case, the 31 strike has 30.48%. That gives us roughly a 0.8% uh, daily return on capital, which meets that 0.75% or higher criteria. That's, it's that simple when it comes to ROC. Add it in your layout, save your layout, your custom layout, and determine what your uh, percentage is by multiplying the days until expiration by 0.75 and then match the ROC column with that number or a little bit higher. I tend to get as far out of the money as possible. There are examples which um, this particular FSLR is not one of them, but sometimes you can you'll see a situation where oh here here you go. So we've got we've got uh, you know the 37 36 and 35 and 34 are all in that 40 range and then you can go to the 33 and it's got a higher ROC of 42.9 so there's instances where you can get further out of the money and get a better return on capital it's a pretty cool situation so that's ROC for you very simple very quick easy it's the number two thing I look at when I'm analyzing naked puts Number one, of course, being liquidity. Can't stress liquidity enough, but this ROC really helps speed up the process. Uh, in our next in part six, we're going to discuss the minimum acceptable theoretical probability of success. And that ties into this, so we'll probably use FSLR as an example again here in part six. We'll see you there.